everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial from the Age of Darkness. And we have yet another Mark VI Space Marine here. We have the World Eaters. Yes, the angriest of traitor boys. And, well, we're going to be painting one up for you today. We are going to be using the new contrast paints and the new shade paints, reformulated shade paints, I should say, from Games Workshop, who sent these to me nice and early to review and to demonstrate for all of you. So... Without further ado, we're going to jump in. We're going to start painting him. He has been primed in grace here, as has the majority of all of our Mark VI Age of Darkness Space Marines, because they want them to be a little bit darker than we would get from a bright white or a white wraith bone, for example. So, the first colour we're going to be making is a roughly four parts soul blight grey to one part contrast medium. Basically, we're going to be building up a little puddle of soul blight grey on our palette then adding just a touch of contrast medium just to improve the flow a little bit. And this is because we're going to be applying this over all of the top of our World Eater's white armour. But we don't want this to be kind of too dark in the recesses because, well, one of the key features of the World Eater's is that they're covered in muck. And a really good way to do that is to build it up in the recesses. However, we do want to get our armour tone spot on first and foremost. Now, they do have a white, but we want it to be just kind of like slightly off-white which is why we're doing this like this and just adding that tiny bit of contrast medium in there just makes that shade improve so much easier with the flow just like this as you can see so what we're going to do is just going to get this over all of our white armor and then once that's done we'll come back So with that Soul Blight Grey and Contrast Medium mix applied, just whilst we're waiting for it to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the new Assam and Blue, and we're going to paint this over, well, the blue details. Now this is going to include his shoulder pads and this backpack. So we're just going to start painting this over the top here. Just like this. So with that Assaman blue applied to the shoulder pads and the backpack, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some Seraphim Sepia and we're just gonna drop this into the recesses on the white armor. So you just wanna very carefully here, just kind of start recess shading more towards the bottom and you can do as much or as little of this as you want and it doesn't matter if you kind of go outside the lines a little bit it will just look like the grime is kind of been set free a little bit. So with that Seraphim Sepia applied, we're then going to take some of the new shades, Tiran Blue. We're going to apply this over the top of our blue sections. Just add us a little bit more darkness, a little bit more punch to those blues. Just like that. So with that Tehran blue apply, it's still drying, but that's okay, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on. We're gonna take some Black Legion now, 
and we're going to start painting this into all of our black detail. So this is going to be areas such as the soft joints in his armor. The cables. The bolt gun casing. And any leather details. For example, this holster just here. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Garagax sewer. I'm going to apply this to his skin, to his visible face, just around here. And with that done, we're then going to take some rattling grime. I'm going to apply this to his hair. Just like that. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thins down lead belcher and we're going to apply this to all of the mechanical areas on his gun and on his backpack. Just like this. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Rune Lord brass. I'm going to use this to paint in the remaining details. So this will be areas such as this assembly up here. On the backpack. The studs. And the harness. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some of the new reformulated Agrax Earthshade and we're going to apply this over the top of all of our metallics. Make them look nice and dirty. Just like this. So with that done, our world eater is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready. However, he's not done, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take him to the next level. We're gonna do this by adding some highlights. We're also gonna be adding a lot of battle damage and wear and tear to our world eater. And we're gonna be starting off by doing this on the white armor. And the color we're gonna be using first is Korax white. What we're going to be doing is we're going to basically we're going to be highlighting his armor first and foremost. So we're just going to be picking out the edges, just like this one here around the knee. Like that. What we're also going to be doing is we're going to be adding little scrapes and nicks and gouges and things. So we're just going to this little bit done here with the highlight and then what we're going to do is we're just going to use this Corax white to draw some little nicks and scrapes and whatnot all across the face of the armor now you can just 
do little crosses on certain ones. Like that. It'll look a little bit subtle at first, but if you build this colour up, you can do sort of bigger ones and smaller ones. So for example, we'll do this edge around here, like that. And then what we'll do as well, is we'll just add So with that Corax white applied all the way around, as you can see, we've got the little nicks and scrapes. Like that. What we're going to do now is we're going to take some Garagax sewer. We're going to use this to add a little bit more of the old damage. So what we're going to do, for example, is we're just going to add little Blobs here and there. Just like this. So with that done, as you can see, it's looking pretty cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add some blood because, well, it wouldn't be a world eater without it. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using two paints for this. We're going to be using contrast medium and blood for the blood god. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some contrast medium on our brush first. And then we're just going to pick an area that we want to add some of this blood. So I'm just going to pick right here on this leg here. So I'm just going to paint this contrast medium straight on like that. I'm going to wash the brush and then I'm going to grab some blood for the blood god. And then I'm basically just going to draw over where we've got that contrast medium. where I want the blood to go. I'm gonna wash the blush, and I'm just gonna pop up some of the excess, like that. And that's 
gonna look a little bit ropey at first. But don't worry, in just a minute, it's gonna look awesome. So once again, just gonna add a little bit more. Gonna add some just here. So here's some contrast medium. Tiny bit of blood for the blood god with a clean brush. Like that, wash the brush. And then just mop up the bits that I don't want. So once that's done, what we then want to do is we want to take a little bit more blood for the blood god. And now we want to kind of add a little bit more of a kind of structure to our blood, like that. I'm just going to use a slightly smaller brush here again. I'm just going to A few little extra bits here and there. Just like this. And so with that done, you then want to take a tiny, tiny little bit of Black Legion and then just add in a little bit of black in the darkest parts of our blood. Just like that. So with that done, our white armor is now finished and sufficiently weathered and it looks awesome. However, we are now gonna do pretty much the same stuff to the blue. Now the color we're gonna be using for this is Hoeth Blue. And what we're gonna be doing is once again, just picking out the edges of our blue details. that sort of thing. However, what we're also going to do is we're going to start adding those little scratches. Just like this. And so with that done, we're then going to once again take the Garagak sewer. And start adding in some of those little darker marks. So with that done, just to finish it off, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of Lothurn Blue. We're going to add this around any of the largest areas of dark, any of the largest scrapes. There's a little kind of highlight type thing. So 
So with that done, all of our blue and white armor is now finished. So what we're gonna do is gonna move on to the metallics and we're gonna highlight all of them using some iron breaker. So that's including the areas that we did with the brass. As well as the silver. And what you can also do if you've got areas such as this little, you can also add a few little extra nicks and scrapes here and there with the iron breaker as well on the metallics. So with that done, all the metallics are actually finished. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take some Skaven Blight Dinge. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our black details. Just like this, but in addition, we're also going to add some little nicks and scrapes here and there. With this Gavin Black Dinge as well. So with that done, we're then going to take some Storm Vermin Fur to add a little spot highlight to the sharpest points. And we're also going to use this to add a little highlight to some of our nicks and scrapes. Just like that sort of thing. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Bane Blade Brown. We're going to use this to highlight his skin. Just picking out all of the features. So just his brows and the wrinkles on his forehead. Just like this. And so with that done, we're then going to take a tiny bit of Carrack Stone, just add a little bit of a spot highlight to the sharpest points on his skin. So just up there, just here on the brow. Just like that. So with that done, we want to take a teeny tiny bit of Black Legion. We want to paint this over his eyeballs. And so with that Black Legion applied, we then want to take a really tiny dot of Screaming Skull. I'm going to add this in either a corner. Of his eyeballs. And so here we have it, our world eater is now finished and he looks absolutely amazing i really love that blood effect on the sh uh, shin guard and it's just so much fun to paint these guys i'm really enjoying weathering space marines this guy and the death guard they've opened my eyes to a whole new world and i might have to go and do a whole weathered army possibly i think that'll look cool which one should it be guys world eaters or death guard you tell me which one's your favourite? I really enjoyed both, and I hope you enjoyed both. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, exactly like these awesome folks have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. 
Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.